Hello everyone, welcome to Let's Photoshop. So in today's tutorial, we'll see how to create this really cool fragment repeat glass that you can see in here using Adobe Photoshop. We are going to create this effect in a non-destructive way using smart object, which means that you can apply the same effect on any other image that you want. But before we're gonna do that, make sure to subscribe and comment and leave a like. Alright, so let's get to it. Alright, so let's go ahead and open uh, Photoshop and then I will go to File, New and I will uh, put uh, 4000 pixels in the width and 3000 pixels in the height and I will keep uh, the resolution set to 72 but of course if you want to change it to 150 or 300 you can do that but for this I will keep it 72 and I will keep uh, the car mode set to RGB 8 bits in here and I will press OK Alright, so the first thing that I will do is to create a, a new layer and I will call this image. So here we were gonna put our image. And let me just delete this background because we won't use it. And then I will uh, right click on this uh, image uh, layer and then I will choose convert to smart subject. Because I want to use this as a photo template. So this way I can apply the same effect that we will do in this tutorial on any other images that I want. And won't have to repeat it again all right now uh, let's go and open this smart object by double click on it uh, right here or you can just right click and choose edit content and this will open a, a new tab where you can uh, edit your smart objects and then I will go to my file and I will put this image in here I will just drag it and open it in here then I will make it bigger I mean, for this effect to work, it's better to have a very good, uh, more like a, a good uh, close-up image, like a portrait or something like that. It will give this effect more like a attractive kind of looking in the ripped glass. All right, so I think uh, this is looking good. And then I will one click on this check mark. And then I will just close this uh, smart objects and this uh, message will pop up and the mixture to press yes and this way you can save this smart object or what uh, we did in the smart objects in, in here. All right, next we need to actually make our strips that we are going to use as a fragment or a ripped glass uh, that we're gonna put in here. All right, so I will actually use the rectangle tool uh, that is in the vector in here and the reason why I will use this because I can uh, make the, the pixels very precise with the size and everything so now when I select this rectangle tool I can just one click and in here you can create a rectangle with whatever width and height you want and this is very important for this effect so I will put in here I will put uh, 80 pixels because we have a 4000 wide uh, canvas in here or image so 80 divided like uh, 80 plus 80 like for like 25 or something it will fill the whole image and in the height remember that we, are, we use like 3000 so I'm gonna put 3000 uh, pixels in the height and uh, make sure that this uh, radius in here is set to zero all of them so we don't want uh, to have a curve corners and uh, you can check this or leave it alone, it depends on you. And then I will press OK. And as you can see now we have our rectangle that we can place just right here. Alright, next I will uh, uh, open this stroke that you can see in here. And I will choose none. And then I will go to the fill. And instead of using a color, I will use a gradient in here that you can see. And in this gradient, make sure that it's set to black, to white. Uh, if you don't have it, you can just, you know, just open the colors and choose black or you can just press D and this will uh, change it to default and also you can just go to the basic gradient in here and choose the first one in here. Alright, next I want to set the angle to be like 180 or let's see me see, I think I want it to be like zero in here because I want the black to start from here and the white to be here and you can reverse it by clicking on this icon in here. 
all right i think it looks good everything is good the scaling is 100 that's what we want all right now i don't need to, this to be a vector anymore so i'm just gonna right click and choose rasterize layer all right next i'm gonna press ctrl alt t or command option t and this will actually enter the transform mode but with a copy that is already made inside the transfer all right now if i drag this it will drag another copy of it because i already pressed ctrl alt t or command option t and now what you want to do is to click on this uh, triangle icon in here that you can see and i want to put uh, in the pixels in here i want to put 80 i want this to be moved as 80 pixels so i'm just gonna press select uh, this uh, x in here and i will put 80 pixels and then i will press enter or return two times and now we have another copy in here all right because we already have these settings in here we can actually repeat this uh, this movement that we do using the control shift alt t or command shift option t all together and while pressing them and pressing t many times you can you can make uh, as many copies as you want and we want to make uh, the copies to be filled the whole canvas uh, so the trick to do that you can just press ctrl shift alt or command shift alt on your keyboard and then press t like one two three like until until it will fill the whole image as i'm doing now so i'm gonna fill this whole canvas just like that and as you can see we end up with uh, 49 copies so remember just press ctrl shift alt uh, in your hand like ctrl shift alt or command shift option keep pressing it and then press t separately while you are pressing ctrl shift alt or command shift option and then press t all right so i hope this is clear all right now we have uh, all these copies in here now i'm gonna select this uh, copy number 49 and then i'm gonna press shift on my keyboard and i will select the first rectangle that we created and this will select more of them as you can see now i want to merge them so i'm gonna press ctrl e or command e to merge the layer to make it as one layer as you can see all right next i want to rotate this layer a little bit so i'm gonna press ctrl command t and in here where you can rotate uh, uh, the layer so i'm gonna rotate it by like 2.5 just like that and then i will go to this width and height and as you can see i already have this linked so whatever changes i will do it will do it for the height too so i'm just gonna make it a little bit so until we're gonna cover all the canvas somewhere around here i think it's very good all right i think i'm happy with this and then i will one click on this check mark all right now we are uh, very good with our strips in here but i want to apply a little bit of blur to these edges so i'm just gonna go to filter blur and i will choose gaussian blur in here and in the radius in here i will let me see maybe three or two yeah i will keep it like three pixels in the radius and i'll press ok all right now i will uh, select the whole canvas by going to select and press all as you can see or you can press ctrl a or command a on your keyboard and this will select the whole canvas all right now i'm gonna copy this canvas by pressing ctrl command c and this will copy and then i will go to file new and as you can see because we already copied the canvas we will have the same width and height and everything in here uh, but for this one i'm gonna change the color mode to grayscale because we want to use it as a displacement map and it's better to have it uh, you know grayscale in the first uh, uh, of the creating the document all right now because we already copied those uh, stripes that we have in the other documents i'm just gonna press ctrl command v and this will paste them as you can see in here now we can just delete this one and let's call this glass and then i will save it uh, to uh, uh, a folder or something so i'm gonna go to file save as and then i want to save it on my computer so i'm gonna 
choose on computer and then I will choose save on computer again and as you can see I already have the folder that I want to save it so I'm gonna name it to map and also make sure that it's set to PSD not to PSB PSD okay and then I'm gonna press save all right now we have our displacement map ready you can just close this and then I'm just gonna hide this and I will keep it in here in case that we want to use it for something else all right next uh, remember the image that we created we can actually duplicate it and uh, let's call this because I want to apply a texture in this I'm gonna duplicate it and let's call this texture because I'm gonna apply a texture in this and I will make it invisible for now and then I will select the image uh, layer in here that we have that we created in the first uh, time and then I will go to filter and I will choose distort and I, I will choose displace in here all right for the displace uh, we're gonna actually only use the horizontal scaling and we're not gonna use the vertical so I'm just gonna make the vertical set to zero and then I will change the horizontal scaling to 100 because of this 4000 to 100 it will work very good and I will keep this stretch uh, to fit in here it doesn't matter if you keep it tight or stretch but I will keep it stretching and then I will keep a uh, repeat edge pixels and I will make sure that embed file data in smart object is checked uh, this is very important because it will embed it uh, this way you can use only the PSD without having the, the displacement map attached with the, with your file all right so I'm gonna press ok and I will wait for this window to open and uh, remember that we created the displacement map PSD now we can just select it and I will press open and this will apply our repeat glass effect as you can see in here it looks very nice all right now I also want to apply some color coming from here uh, but before we're gonna do that let me see yeah let's do that right now so I'm gonna make a copy of this actually I'm gonna make two copies by pressing alt or option and taking this and drag it on top and then I will do the same pressing alt or option and dragging it on top and let's call this RGB 1 and let's call this RGB Two. all right so let me hide the RGB one for now and then I will select RGB two and I want to move it a little bit to the right that's like 3.5 percent and I will press on this check mark and then actually I want to change the, the RGB inside the, the layer style so while I'm selecting the RGB2, I will go to this FX icon and I will uh, open the blending options. And then I will just uh, uncheck the green one. And as you can see, this will create this uh, RGB split effect in here. And I will press OK. All right, next I want to uh, go to filter and choose blur gallery. And I want to choose this path blur in here. Because I want the blur to go like it's going like this so remember that we move it to the right so i'm just gonna take this point and put it just right here and i will take this arrow and bring it way up like where into the right too and maybe i will make it a little bit curvy and maybe put it a little bit up and you can change the the end point speed in here or you can just use it in here if you want i think this looks good Yeah, something like that I think it's good and let's change the speed to 61 all right I think I'm happy with this and I will press ok all right as you can see now we have this effect that is going like it's going in this way uh, in a blurred way all right next I want to apply a layer mask so I'm gonna apply a layer mask in, in, on this one and let me delete this smart filter layer mask and then I will go to my gradient and make sure that you are uh, selecting the linear gradient in here the first one and also make sure that it's set to color to transparent and black that we want to use 
So I'm just gonna go in here and drag, make a point and drag in here to delete this side of uh, the image, as you can see. Now we only have its effects in here. Maybe I will do a little bit more in here. That's a little bit. All right, something like that. Now I will uh, put down the fill to like 50% because I don't want it to be that much. Just like that. And then I will go to the RGB one layer on top and I will make it visible. And I will do the same. I'm gonna press Ctrl Command T and I will drag it to uh, the left this time, like 3.6%. And I will do the same, I will uh, open the blending option by double click in here, this time, to open the blending options. And then this time I will uh, deselect uh, the green and the blue and I only leave the red, just like that, and I will press OK. Alright, so I will do the same, I will go to filter, blur, main blur gallery, and I will uh, choose path blur. Now this time we're gonna do it to the left, so I'm gonna take this arrow and put it way there, like that. Maybe from here and put it way up. Then let's change the speed. All right, something like that. And that will be okay. All right, now we have this effect. Now we're gonna do the same. We're gonna apply a layer mask. And let me delete this smart object layer mask. And I will select the layer mask and using the same gradient uh, but this time I will make the gradient come from this from here to here just like that all right something like this but also I want to put the, the fill to 50% all right and let's me group these two so I'm gonna select the RGB1 and RGB2 by pressing Ctrl command and pressing Ctrl command G you can create a group and I will call this RGB. All right, so we're almost there. As you can see, it looks very nice, very interesting. But I still want to apply uh, a glass filter on this. So I will select the image one that we created. And then I will go to filter. And I will go to distort. And as you can see, we have this glass filter in here. So I will open it. And this will open the filter galleries. Let me just make this to fit to screen. All right, so in the glass uh, filter, maybe you will uh, find it like to canvas, uh, but we want uh, for this filter to be used this, to use the same displacement map that we created. So to do that, you can just go in this texture in here and where you can see this, uh, these lines in here, you can just open this and choose load textures and then choose the same displacement map that we created. So I'm just gonna open it. And as you can see, this will create the same effect. But we're gonna change some things. We're gonna change the distortions to like, let me see, like six or five. And I will keep the smoothness set to 15. And you can see the before and after. It looks way more interesting now. And also if you if you want you can change the scaling to make it even smaller if you want or change the scaling to make it even bigger but for us we didn't change the scaling of the image so it's better to keep it 100 percent and i will press ok all right it looks really really nice okay so the last thing that we are going to do is to apply a, a texture on this image that we created, that we duplicated and keep it on top. But for this one, actually I'm gonna open the texture that I have in here, this one. Let me just drag it and open it in here. And for this texture, I want to use it in the layer mask. So I'm just gonna press Ctrl Command A to select the whole canvas and then Ctrl Command C to copy it. And I will just delete this texture because we already have it copied. And then I will create a layer mask and then I'm gonna press Alt or Option and I will one click on this layer mask itself and this will allow me to enter the layer mask. Now, because I already uh, copied the texture, I can just press Ctrl Command V and this will paste the same texture in here and I can press Ctrl Command D to deselect. And then I'm gonna press Alt or Option again to go out of the layer mask. And as you can see, we have the texture in here. 
now you can just keep it like that if you want but I think uh, it uh, looks even better if you change the blending mode of this to screen give it this really nice scratches as you can see in here and even in the background but I don't want it to be that strong so I'm gonna put the filter like 70% or 75 all right next I want to apply another texture on top of everything uh, this hologramming here I will take it and open it in the same document and let me place it just right here and then I will change the blending mode of it to screen and I will put down the filter like 20% or 25 just to give this really interesting lights coming from the both sides in here all right I think we are doing good and that's our effect as you can see it looks very very nice I think it's a very interesting effect and it's very really easy to do all right so now uh, because we create this as a, a smart object so this way we can use this smart object to to apply this effect on other images if you want and to do that you can just open the, any of these smart object, objects and just double click on this smart object or right click and choose edit content and then you can just open a new image for example this one I will take it and open it in here and make it bigger to be really close up image better just like that Maybe I would rotate it just to give this very different effect and I will one click on this check mark and then you can either press Ctrl command S to save or you just close this smart object and press yes to save it and wait for your document to be updated all right as you can see we have the same effects in here applied on another image and with the texture and everything and it looks very very nice you can see all right so that's our effect let me just go back to the other image and this will be all all right so i hope that you enjoyed and you like this tutorial and it was a little bit helpful for you if you try this make sure to let me know on instagram facebook whatever and uh, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like and comment and wait for more tutorials to come and have a nice day thank you for watching Thank you.